and we have one of the best in the county, Mike the Plumber, will come in for a nominal charge of between $50 and $60, install your toilet. And there is a rebate up to $100 per toilet. That is as simple as it can get. And now I'm gonna turn the mic over to our mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Thank you very much for inviting me here tonight. I'm just gonna talk for a few minutes and then take a few questions. Um, the water program dealing with the toilets is a program that is Broward County and I'm not gonna steal whoever's thunder is supposed to speak on it in more detail or whatever the county was gonna speak on, but I know that the city has purchased it in the program. It's something that we were working on a couple of years ago and finally able to do something. This program I was working on with our grants administrator, we were able to finally work with Broward County that I believe Broward County is running the program, which is perfectly fine, it's less, to, less staff time on our part. But the city does have an overall uh, energy conservation, water conservation program that it's working on, and the program dealing with the water is running through the county, so that's that part of it. But as the city goes, we have tried to save money because money is very difficult to come by. And I've always had a saying that I've been using the last couple of years, been saying, uh, for every dollar we save, is one less dollar that we have to either cut programming or raise the taxes. So we've been working to try and reduce our energy costs and our operating costs in the city in a variety of different ways, such as the city of Lauderhill. All new structures have to meet what's called LEED Silver Standards. LEED is a uh, net rec uh, internationally recognized standard of construction that removes or reduces costs. Our city hall is a LEED Silver building and the savings that they estimated the building is supposed to produce is 19% less in cost than a typical building that is not lead silver. So 19% adds up to be quite a bit of money. Uh, we have been working on hybrid cars, alternative energy cars, uh, to reduce our cost. Uh, our police cars, we're getting six to nine percent. The new cars we're getting are six to nine miles to the gallon. Our new police cars are hopefully going to get around 15 miles to the gallon. Our city manager's vehicle, he was getting around 12 miles to the gallon. He has a hybrid car that gets down 25 miles to the gallon. And you know how gas costs, so every little dollar helps. Um, uh, we are, there's a, there's a whole ton of programs that we have, and strangely enough, tomorrow I'm actually going to be presenting it to another business group downtown Fort Lauderdale Live. I do have a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm not doing it here tonight. One of the programs that I do want to make, uh, specifically I want to point out to you, because this is a program that I developed that directly benefits you, the residents of the city of Lauderdale. We have a uh, interest-free energy loan that we are giving out residents to the city of Lauderdale. You can borrow from the city up to $2,000 interest-free for up to two years. And you can borrow the money to install energy efficient appliances such as Energy Star refrigerators, Energy Star washing machines, um, Energy Star dishwashers. You can install a new air conditioner that meets certain criteria. You can also install certain solar facility or solar uh, products. I don't know how the kind of thing would allow you to do it one way or the other. Uh, solar thermal and solar panels, if you can work something out with that. There's a variety of different things that, uh, and I only mentioned a couple of them. Um, oh, a uh, gasless water tank you can have installed. So what we've done is we try to work it out so that assuming you buy a product and you do the financing through the city, you can reduce your energy costs, and you're still gonna probably pay about the same amount of money, but once you pay off the loan, you now have the savings. Such as, and I don't have an example off the top of my head because it's in my PowerPoint presentation. I will, I do have a presentation called, How Much Do Your Appliances Cost You? And if you'd like to on a separate occasion, to any group you want to, I'd be happy to bring it and present it. It's about a 30 minute presentation. I'm not gonna do it tonight. But as an example, my own mother, who lives in Century Village, who said, I wanted to get her a new air conditioner because it was like 30 years old. And she said no, because her electric bill is only about $95 a month because she barely runs it, refused to get one. And then six months later, her air conditioner broke and it was no longer repairable. And so I got her a new one and her electric bill went from $95 a month to $35 a month. 
So she's saving six dollars a month. It cost her uh, uh, two thousand dollars for the air conditioner. So what's sixty times twelve times two? One hundred and twenty. So it pays for itself. As a standard rule, I'm saying that if your electric bill is one hundred and fifty dollars a month or more, how many people in the room your electric bills are one hundred and fifty dollars a month? There it is not. Excellent. There are condominiums where people, they are. I had an employee in my office, their apartment was $300 a month in electricity. And the land, because landlord, no one fixed up, she moved to another place, and now using the same amount of electricity, that was more inefficient, it's now $80 a month. That's how much it was wasting. All right, how many people, the air conditioner, their electric bill is over $100 a month? Yeah, summertime. Yeah, summertime. Okay, you're wasting electricity. I can tell you, you are. How old is your air conditioner unit? 12. What? 12 years old. 12 years old. Anyone whose air conditioner, 12 years old, you probably have a 7 or 8 SEER rated air conditioner. Now you can get them as high as 23, but we're looking to do around, you cannot buy one less than 13 or 14 SEER, that's the measurement, and most of the people are doing around a 16 SEER. Um, so you possibly could save money there, and it may be financed with the program. Uh, anyone who has a refrigerator that is pre-2002, how many people have that? You're wasting energy. Even if you bought a non-Energy Star refrigerator since 2002, your electricity has gone down because the federal government has mandated refrigerator manufacturers to improve the efficiency, and they did. So they dropped. But if you get an Energy Star, it's a lot more. And if I do the program, I can show you exactly how much more you're spending. All right? That's the programs we have. We're doing a lot in the city, and rather than go on, I'm sure, is this the person from the county here? Yeah, he'll be right back. He'll be right back, good. Does anyone have any questions? I'd be happy to answer this or anything else that's lost in here. Yes? I changed my commodes two or three days ago, and now you're doing this program. Am I entitled to the rebate? I have to receive Talk to these gentlemen. Uh, I, I, I don't did. know. I uh, it's a program that we arranged through the county to make it available, but the city is not administering the program. Uh, we were at one time looking to administer the program. We found it the county was doing. We said we just joined forces, let them run it. So I didn't care as long as we got the benefit. That's all I cared about. All right. So I don't know the answer. You can ask the gentleman from the county. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's on the water? That? Talk to the county person. Okay, I'm not doing the... We help work with the county to do it, but we're not administering the program, so I don't have those answers. I just know about the program because we wanted to be part of it. I believe, though it's not... Not everything's included in it, only because no one's ever asked, but if someone asks for doing something that could provide insulation, and if you requested it, we could look into changing the program to accommodate. We had someone that wanted to put a geothermic water heater in, which is not part of the program because no one ever had heard of geothermic water heater. But we discovered we could, but they decided to go ahead with it and they got their own financing. And geothermic's really great, but uh, it's a unique system. All right, you have to drill into the ground. Yes? Do you know what the cost of those thermal heaters are? We do not control how much anything costs. We do not tell you what contractors to go to. We do not want to be liable as a city to recommend someone who does a lousy job. The only thing I could recommend to you is to check several contractors and compare prices. Right now, actually, is a very good time to get this work done. It's been for the last two years because they're desperate for work. And uh, in the summer is when they are really busy. And right now, it's a little, you're going to get the heater stuff done right now. But they're a little bit slow right now. So check with several companies. Um, I'm not sure if the city will even tell you. They won't recommend anyone. But some people in the department might tell you, have you ever had a complaint by so-and-so contractor? I think we're allowed to say that because that's a public record. You can request. I'd like to know if this particular contractor, public record, has the city ever had a complaint against. Maybe they would provide that. Any other questions? Yes. Um, it, does the loan have any like income cap? Yes, you do have to qualify for the loan. You do have to have a certain FICO score. And we have to tie it into a automatic pay system. If, like if you're a city employee, we take it right out of your salary check. 
if you're not, we have to tie it into a bank account. So that every month on the first of the month, boom, it comes immediately out the whatever it is, a couple of the dollars, $40, $60 a month, whatever it is. And just to let you know, we've had this program now for over two years, and we have not had one single default, which is great. Uh, and where the money came from, just so you know, I mean, this is not political, but the, with the federal government doing the stimulus program uh, provided the cities a uh, federal energy block grant funds that the city could use in any way appropriate. We used it for uh, putting some lights in the park. We used it when we gave away 10,000 free CFL bulbs. I don't know how many people here might have received some of those bulbs. We're at the city events and we handed them out. It was very popular. Uh, $35,000 went into this program. It's a revolving loan. They specifically wanted a revolving loan program. We're one of the few cities in the country that actually created an interest-free revolving loan program. And it's sustaining itself so it can go indefinitely as long as nobody goes into default. The rest of the money is going into the Performing Arts Center uh, that we're trying to get a contractor to build on right now. So that's where the money came from. Yes. The big problem, as I see it, with our type of economy is the fact that the water goes with the maintenance. And therefore, there's no individual responsibility for the water usage. Is there anything that, the, that you can suggest or that the city or... Uh, there can are, I'm not positive about it, we've done it for apartment buildings, definitely. The city will do one water meter, but they've been putting the sub-meters into it, and then the landlord has been charging the tenant directly for the water usage. And it is possible, but you'd have to ask the city whether or not you would be allowed to put in sub-metering or metering directly in units and kind of would get out of it. You're absolutely right about the water situation in that if you're not paying it, if you don't see it, you don't know you're wasting it. And that's absolutely true. And as a perfect example, just to let you know, my wife and I just bought a place up in Vermont, which we do our vacations and I'm renting it out and stuff like that. And when I got it, we had to set up a water account and they told me it was $128 per quarter. And I'm going, well, what about you know water usage? They said, nobody has a meter. It's a flat 128 for the entire town. Everyone pays 128 per uh, quarter to the town for water, irrespective of if you use any or you use thousands of gallons. I'm going, that makes no sense. There's no conservation built in. They said, well, nobody has a water meter. And I'm going, really? That's really weird. weird. And kind of like what you got, it took you to actually have to pay it. So you may want to talk to the city about some metering and individual metering. I don't know if it can be done. It also might be expensive, but in the long run, you know, you finance it, figure out how much it might be. But that's, for, I, first thing, you remember John Mullins? Anyone here remember John Mullins? Yeah. Okay, John. John taught me something when I was a young elected official. He said, never get involved in condemning politics, particularly at International Village. <laughs> And therefore, I will not get involved in your condominium politics. If your condominium requests me to assist them on something by your board, I will do it, but I take no position or opinion as to whether or not you individually should do it. That is your decision, not mine. I only am there to accommodate the request of the parties as far as the city goes. Okay. Well, who in the city do we speak to? Uh, the building department would be the person, Don G. Coley, or somebody in the building department in the business center on the first floor. Can we say that you sent us? You can say that the mayor talked about possibly that you were interested in seeing what could be done as far as sub-metering units within the condominium or some sort of similar thing so you can get water conservation. Can you please tell us what the city of Lauderdale allows and how we can go about doing it? And he'll tell you what you can do. Okay, yes. Somebody got that information? Yeah, well, I know Don, so yeah, I will. Yeah, Sharon remembers everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was shown a, a, a budget from a northern community, a wealthy northern community, about the same size as this. And their water charge was about 50% of what we pay here. Well, can you talk about rates and. Sure. Uh, I can't compare northern to southern because they have different systems that they draw on and they have different expenses to do it with. I can tell you that we have spent over $35 million in improvements as mandated, but not only did we have to do some of it, 
but uh, a good part of it was mandated by the federal government. We now have to test for something in our water supply that only exists in Hawaii, because one size fits all. That is actually required. Federal regulations required us, so we spent about $35 million. We had to bond it out. I will tell you that as far as the South Florida area, which is Broward, Dave, and Palm Beach County, I believe we have among the lowest water rates. At one time, we had the lowest, and then West Palm Beach got lower than us. But we have, a, within South Florida, which comprises over 70 cities, plus the counties, one of the lowest ones. I don't know if we're the second lowest anymore or not, because we had to go and bond out all that money to build up the, put the $35 million into the new plant. There were some Homeland Security issues that were put into there. Uh, after 9-11, a lot of, or 2-11, yeah, uh, after 9-11, yeah, uh, a lot of issues came up that we had to secure the water plant from attack. That was also a good one. I can't go into the security. You're talking about South Florida versus South Florida. I'm talking about within South Florida. If you're going to compare water rates, compare us to the city of Sunrise, where our water rates are less. Compare us to Broward County. Compare us to Coral Springs, Tamarack. You can even compare us to Boynton Beach or Del Rey or the city of Miami. You know, okay, that's a fair comparison because you can drive to it. Do not compare me to Jasper, Florida on the Georgia border. That's not a fair comparison. Well, yeah. Well, we don't have income tax here, nor city tax. So, yeah, you want to compare us to taking all the tax sources. There's a reason why they call it Taxachusetts. Okay? I'm in a state planning. I have a master of law and tax. I know how much taxes are in other places. And just to let you know, I deal in other states. And our taxes, as high as you think they are, I, nothing. My condo up in Vermont that I just bought, it, the taxes are the same as my house down here, and it's about one-third the value and about one-third the size. It's amazing how much more it is up there. There's income tax, room tax, and all sorts of other things. So it's a lot more expensive about when you get outside of the state. So any other questions? No? Okay. Just to let you know, we do have elections in November. Three commissioners are up for re-election. There may be other people running for it. There may be a fourth slot. One commissioner is presently running for county commission. He will have to resign to do so, and that makes it an open seat. I'm not open until 2014, and then we'll see what happens. So if anyone wants to help me, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are we ready for the PowerPoint? Great. Okay. You'll need a mic. <laughs> 